Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and today we're back with the CoreGop 6 and exploring the idea of building different synth architectures within the Op 6. In previous videos, I've tackled the idea of building a uh, Juno style synth and a rather more peculiar and strange Buchler Music Easel style uh, architecture inside the Op 6. Today's video is going to be a little bit different in that I'm not going to try and build a specific synth. Rather, I'm going to focus in on a feature that is common to a bunch of different um, instruments, and that is the idea of building a filter bank in the op six. So first things first, what is a filter bank? Well, if you've been around since uh, a little bit, you've most certainly come across uh, filters because they make up um, one of the primary parts of a subtractive synth architecture, which is probably the most common type of synth that you're gonna come across. Um, in terms of the different types of filters, uh, of course we have our low pass, which is probably the most common type of filter where um, anything lower than the cutoff is allowed to pass, hence low pass, and anything above it is cut off. So by turning the filter down, we get a darker sound. Probably the next most common one that you will come across is a high pass filter, which is the other way around. So everything higher than the cutoff will be allowed to pass, hence high pass, and anything below it is cut off. So we turn up the cutoff to get a brighter, thinner sound. Uh, they're probably the most common ones that you come across, but um, I've recently become very, very enamored with bandpass filters. Bandpass filters, uh, rather than uh, letting the lower or higher uh, frequencies pass, instead cut the lower and higher filter uh, frequencies and just allow a band in the middle to go through instead. And it's a super cool sound, especially when you start to add that lovely windy resonance in there. Um, I've really got into bandpass filters, especially since getting into modular. Um, they're, they're just very, very wonderful things for a whole different um, set of reasons to low pass and high pass. For the sake of completeness, you also get band reject filters, which is kind of the opposite to uh, band pass where rather than allowing a band through, we cut out a band. Which again, it's a very cool sound. If you are into phases, you're immediately going, yes, I like that sound, of course. That's not what we're talking about uh, today. The filter that we're fil uh, focusing in on is the band pass filter, uh, because a filter bank, generally speaking, is made up of a bunch of parallel band pass filters. So that is, you have a signal, which is split to a bunch of different filters, all set at different frequencies, typically fixed frequencies, but of course we don't have to live by those rules. Uh, you add a little bit of resonance to each of those bands, and then by combining the relative levels of those bands, we can get lots of different uh, characters from uh, our sounds. It's kind of like, uh, sort of like a graphic EQ, um, but um, without trying to be quite so clean, neat and tidy, a lot more sort of character and ring generally introduced by these resonant bandpass filters. So in terms of where you will find uh, filter banks, they're wonderful for creating this kind of um, interesting ringing character to uh, sounds, but they seem to be especially adept at doing kind of vocal sounds. So one place you'll certainly find a filter bank is in a vocoder, which is basically just a filter bank where each filter has an envelope follower associated with the um, the modulator signal and then a VCA to apply those um, same bands to the carrier. Um, but uh, also in terms of vocally sounds, you'll find this kind of um, setup on uh, string machines for the um, for the uh, the vocal parts on the string machines, especially good when paired with chorus, the Vox Humana sound, also based around a filter bank. Lots of interesting vocally sounds seem to be very, very easily pulled from this setup. And it's certainly quite evocative of a particular age in electronic music, I think. There's a certain classic sound that is associated with anything you put through a filter bank. They're also found in big modular systems, and I certainly would love a nice fixed filter bank in my system if I had more space, perhaps. Um, 
for doing all sorts of, as I say, sort of characterful, ringing manipulation of sounds. Right, so that's what they are. That's where you may find them. How are we going to build it in the optics? So our plan uh, in this case is going to be a lot simpler than the previous two videos. Really, uh, all we need is a single source, uh, which we're just going to use probably an FM operator for, and then that is going to be sent into all of the other remaining five uh, operators, all of which are going to be set to filter mode, bandpass mode, um, and set to different frequencies. Um, each of those uh, can then be sent to the output. We'll also want to make sure on all of these that we turn down the uh, oscillator mix so that they are not generating any sound themselves, rather just passing through and filtering the sound coming from this top operator. So let's jump to an initialized patch and build this. So as always, if we're working with the user algorithms, we're going to head to the home page here. We're going to turn up the algorithm all the way until we get to user. There's no um, built-in algorithm that replicates this. Weirdly, um, I kind of thought there was, but there isn't. Uh, so um, onto user algorithm, and then we'll go into the miscellaneous menu, come down to um, user algorithm and press yes to come in here to build our algorithm. So the first thing we probably want to do is go on to page two here, and uh, we're going to choose which of these operators are going to act as outputs. And in this case, it's everything other than operator one. So operator one, we can leave on off, and all the others we can turn on like that. They've all turned red, telling us that they are a carrier and an output. So um, come over to the other page here, and we can start building our algorithm. Uh, and again, it's going to be a pretty simple one to do. It's just going to be each of the operators has one going into it and one isn't doing anything. So at the moment we're on operator one, which we don't need to do anything to. Move to the next operator, and we say we want one to go into two. Next one, we want one to go into three. Next one, we want one to go into four, one to go into five, and one to go into six. So kind of simple as that. Cool, so we can come out of the user algorithm setup now and we can start building our patch a little bit more. So um, let's start by going to operator one. Now with everything else turned down, operator one isn't going to make sound because it doesn't have a direct out. If we turned up one of the other operators, we would hear something. Um, not the right thing yet, but we would hear something. So operator one, in terms of the mode, I'm just going to leave it in FM because that works for me. Uh, it, it requires the least faff um, to do anything else with it. And I'm going to set it over on to saw um, just because a lot of these patches, uh, especially when you're looking for vocal sounds, are going to work best with a saw input. Uh, it's level and um, uh, envelope generator. We can address that as we go along. What I'm going to do here is build an architecture where um, the kind of the envelope of the synth is dealt with on operator one and the others are basically set to, to drone essentially. So uh, what I'm gonna do is set up one of the operators the way I need it and then copy it across to all the other operators because the only difference between each of these operators is going to be the uh, filter frequency that they're set up at. So um, we'll come across to operator two, which we'll set onto filter mode, and we will choose our filter type now. There are a couple of different bandpass um, filters that are available to us. There's the basic bandpass filter here. There is an MG bandpass filter, which is six pole, and one that is 12 pole. Uh, in terms of which one you wanna go with, I would say experiment and see which one you like the best. Uh, the basic bandpass filter is very clean. Um, the MG ones are a little bit more characterful, have a little bit more ring to them, and they saturate a little bit, which means you can drive operator one into the filters to get different characteristics, which is quite interesting, and you get more variation in the sound uh, based on operator one's level as the envelope changes. So I, in testing, I've preferred these MG ones, in particular, the 12-pole one, uh, but your mileage may vary. 
experiment, see what you like. We're going to turn the oscillator mix all the way down because we don't want to hear anything that this operator has to say. We just want to use it as a filter. So if we now turn it up, we should be able to hear operator one coming through it and be filtered with a bandpass filter. So um, we're going to come into the pitch menu uh, because we don't want operator two to be tracking its filter across the keyboard. And if we're in ratio mode, that is the basic default um, mode here. Um, that is what's going to happen. We're going to get filter tracking. Things are going to be darker up at the top and brighter, uh, sorry, darker down at the bottom and brighter up at the top. That's not what we want. Uh, we want this filter to stay still where we set it. So we can move that over to fixed. Um, sorry, one wrong knob there. And now we can choose uh, where it's going to sit. And we can fine tune this as we go along. Um, somewhere around to 20 is probably going to be a good low point. Might try lower. But yeah, let's maybe try 190. And the other thing I want to do is just get this filter ringing a little bit so that it's imparting a little bit more character to things. Now you can do that by ear by just turning up the resonance, but one really neat trick if you want to find the point at which the filter starts to ring is if we come back to operator one and we drop its pitch all the way down so it's clicking. You can hear that now it's so slow that it's clicking rather than making a pitch. If we come back to operator two now and uh, go into its mode and start to increase the resonance, there'll be a point at which we can hear, hear they starting to ring a bit. And again, your mileage will vary. It's basically pinging a filter here. But I liked it in testing when it was just getting a little bit drummy. So somewhere around there. Uh, we can come back to operator one now and set its pitch back to, I'm going to leave it at, um, at 0.5 actually, because the, just the range of the, the sounds is a little bit better in this case, if I set it there. So now we have That oscillator is going through that band. And you can already almost hear there is a interesting vocal quality to it. And you can also hear there's a bit of a warmth at the front there. That's because we've got that filter at that ringing point and it's saturating a bit as well. And that's all just going to impart character. You can dial that resonance back if it's too much for you in a particular patch. So um, one last thing to do on operator to our first band here uh, and that is we want to set the um, level envelope to basically drone and we'll let operator one do what it needs to do so we'll set um, the attack to zero we'll set the sustain to full we'll set our release as long as it will go and we'll set the curve to linear um, because that um, gives us the gives us the uh, gentlest release <laughs> And now anything that we um, change on operator one is just going to be reflected in the output of the pitch of the patch instead, which is all good. So um, next thing we want to do is copy that across to all of the other operators and set their relative frequencies. Now we could spend time duplicating that across all of the different operators, but uh, the Opsix actually has in a built-in little feature that allows us to copy everything across. So if we come into the miscellaneous by doing shift and filter, uh, we want to go up to, uh, sorry, down to the op utility here. And now we've got copy op from one to two. That's not what we want. We want from two to three and we can say yes. From two to four, yes. Two to five, yes. And two to six, yes. And now each of those is going to be uh, set up identically. But that's not quite what we want. We actually want them to all have different frequencies. So there's our first one. If we bring this up, it's just going to kind of double the output. Not quite what we, what we want. 
Um, but we can now that we've set the um, pitch on each of these to fix, we can use the knobs up here to do um, pitch movement, which in the case of filter, uh, our operator is going to give us a frequency movement instead. So. I'm just going to pick up some frequencies that seem to work for me. something like that and now we have a filter bank so as a really sort of basic example of how this might work if i just play uh, a chord i can start to bring in these different bands and you can hear that there's a real vocal quality and you can get loads of different flavors and characters from this sawtooth wave by arranging the bands at different rel uh, different relative levels Excuse me. Which immediately is quite evocative for me. Um, but let's um, turn this into a kind of like uh, a string machine voice setup. So there's a couple of things that we can do to make that a little bit more string machine-y. So the first thing, and possibly the most important thing, I think, uh, in terms of getting this to be more string machine-y, is to give it a little bit of uh, vibrato. So operator one is the only thing that we're actually hearing here. So we can come back to operator one and come into the pitch menu, tap it again, so we can start to apply some vibrato, LFO one. <laughs> Something like that. Um, maybe we'll just change the speed a little bit. A little bit lower. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, one thing, however, that the um, string machines tended to have uh, or often had on the voice is that rather than having the vibrato always there, it would fade in. They would like a, have a decay on it. Um, if I am uh, recalling the fade on the OP6 fades out rather than in, I think. Oh no, I'm quite wrong. Fades in. Okay, perfect. A little faster. Cool, yeah, okay. Um, next thing we probably want to give it a little bit more of a gentle um, envelope in terms of the, the sound coming in. And because of the way we've set this up, we can do this entirely inside OP1 rather than having to duplicate envelopes across multiple operators or anything. So uh, we can go into level, we're on operator one already, and we can start to set a... It's such a vibey kind of retro. Those two are probably set too close to each other. Mm. 
Now, strictly speaking, if we wanted to turn this into a proper string machine, we'd want this to be um, paraphonic. Uh, but there's simply no way of doing it on the OP6, as far as I can tell. I've tried real hard to find it, and I just can't. Um, if anyone can think of a way to do it, uh, then please let me know. Um, but the poly uh, voice assignment, there's poly, there's mono, and there's mono legato, and I just can't find a way to make it paraphonic. So we have to deal with um, the uh, level envelope being articulated separately on each note. So sorry about that. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's quite an evocative sound, but there is something that is missing 100% in terms of getting that string machine sound, and that is chorus. Now, if I remember rightly, if we come into the effects here, whoops, um, the first one is set as chorus anyway, so we can just turn up the mix a little bit. different characters depending on how we set the various it's a nice one Actually, think about it. If we wanted to um, get rid of our modulation, we could actually, in the pitch menu here, set this to go through the mod wheel. So when the mod wheel is down, so we still have mod wheel control that way, and we can probably make a bit more stream at the top end, then, can't we? Please excuse my very mediocre white key noodlings. It's a really evocative sound. I, filter banks always seem to make things sound like they're of a particular age, and uh, it's just just a nice thing, I think. Anyway, let's um, take this patch and do something a little bit more interesting with it. Let's introduce some more. Um, uh, some more modulation to the sound and I think eventually we'll get to like a talking robot um, out the back end of this. So I think absolutely the first thing that we should try in terms of getting a bit more movement into this is modulate the levels of the operators. It's a really obvious thing to do but uh, I think it will sound pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these all a little bit below halfway-ish uh, to begin with to give us space both up and down uh, with our modulation. Um, in the mod menu, I'm going to set my two LFOs to what? Uh, shall we do some random movements? So it's kind of like a fake vocoder of someone's talking, but they're not really saying anything real. Um, so let's um, set both of these to random level and time. And I'm going to set it on a per voice basis. So each note played is going to articulate the various different bands differently, which I think will be an interesting sound. And we'll just duplicate that exact same idea. Uh, random level and time on the other one as well. Voice sync there. Right, and now we can come into our V patch and start patching those into the various different levels here. So let's start by maybe doing um, LFO 2, going to operator 2's level, maybe up and down by uh, 50 or so. We start to hear that one fade in and out a little bit. 
next one, let's do uh, LFO3, let's send that to operator 3's level, same deal more or less, start to hear that magic happening, yes, good, uh, and we'll come back round to LFO2, send it to operator 4's level, but we'll send it backwards, the bipolar, so what we'll get is kind of like a cross fading between these two. So as one goes high, the other will go low, which would be quite cool. Yeah, it's starting to talk to us. Uh, LFO3, destination, up five, level, same deal. We'll go backwards on this one again. So those two different bands will cross fade each other. Good. Uh, and uh, operator, what am I doing? Uh, source. And what we'll do is we'll do LFO3, but we'll go via LFO2 uh, for six level. Right? Let's try that low. We've still got that chorus on the go as well. See, now it sounds like some sort of demon throat singing thing going on there, which, <laughs> depending on your, <laughs> depending on what you're into, might be uh, appealing. I think at this point we can also think about adding uh, maybe some reverb. And probably some delay as well. Should we put some tape delay on that? Because we could play with the uh, the rate of those uh, as well. We could maybe have one going slower than the other one. And maybe the other one going much faster. still adjust the relative levels a little bit if we want if we want that some more glottal throaty thing happening there So here we're more sort of alien singing, I think, probably. But let's see if we can turn that into robots instead. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear robots, I think arpeggiator. So um, let's engage the arpeggiator and set it to latch. And let's just plumb in some notes. Now, I don't think robots are as gentle as that with our envelope, first and foremost. So um, let's come back on to our operators, and let's come back around to operator one, which are on, and let's adjust this operator um, level EG to be 
plucky. Yes, that's more like it. I might adjust that in a minute, but um, that's uh, better. That's a bit more robotic. Um, okay, um, in terms of the modulation for this, let's uh, go ham with the modulation because that's where the magic is going to happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my two modulation LFOs. Uh, we're going to sit with a random thing going on. We're going to set them to the uh, sample and hold, which is just your straight up sort of random sample and hold. But I'm going to slam the um, speed all the way down. And what this will do for this patch, because none of the notes are staying around for very long, is basically because this is set to key sync voice, we're just going to get a new random value each time we press the key. Um, and we'll do the same thing on uh, this one as well. So it's not made a whole lot of difference to our patch as is because we're already basically just getting those random bits happening there. But let's break the rule of a fixed filter bank and make sure uh, that those filters aren't fixed anymore because I think as we start to modulate those um, filter cutoffs, things are gonna get rather magical. So we're gonna come back into the V patch here. We'll leave our level movement going on because I think that's working for us uh, but we're now going to go and um, additionally add some pitch movement to the operators and because these are filter operators uh, in fixed mode the pitch of the operators is also going to be our filter cutoff so um, I started with LFO 3 on that one didn't I uh, so let's no LFO 2 on that one so let's flip that and we'll go to uh, LFO 3 for this one destination Operator 2 pitch immediately as we let that move around a little bit. Things start to get pretty interesting. Let's do the same trick for the next few as well. So this one could be LFO 2, destination op 3 pitch. I'm just kind of arbitrarily setting these, just listening to what's happening for until I hear something cool. Uh, here we go again on LFO3 for op 4 pitch. And we'll go down this time because the bipolar, this will also send it high. Yes. Starting to get those little Barks up at the top there. Lovely. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah, three. Uh, so next one. Source. LFO two. Go to five. Pitch. Six. Six is set quite high, so I think maybe we just leave six as like a treble control. Yeah, I think so. But I think what we will do is get this to pan around a bit as well. So we'll go uh, LFO two via three. Destination will be program pan and because these are set per voice LFOs this is going to be per voice panning sweet don't want to get too wide my little alien robot friends are talking to me now I think what will be really really cool here 
is if we now modulate the decay portion of Operator 1's uh, envelope. So we get some really short little barks and then some longer ones as well. So um, again, we'll just pick one of the LFOs. I'll choose two. Uh, operator 1, and we want that going to the decay time. drop that sustain down. Let's try this in a lower octave. In fact, let's just have the arpeggiator go across two octaves. Maybe we'll just put the master filter down a little bit. Yes. instead. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having a lot of fun with this patch. Of course, we can still have like a bit more of an effect over everything by adjusting the relative levels of, the, of our bands. Affect a bit more. Uh, we've got one more slot on the V patch. What do we send that to? Uh, I mean, we could send it to the octave of. Operator one, couldn't we? Or the program octave? So now we've got the two octave range on the arpeggiator, but within that, it's swinging at an octave higher or lower on top of it per voice. I also wonder whether this will sound better if we set this to mono mode. About the same. The unison might be cool. Makes the panning weird though. Bit of portamento. Whoop. I could sit and play with this. Synths are just fun, aren't they? Grab a master filter on it with a I 
think we'll leave it there with our little our new friends little robot friends chatting away in the background if you uh, enjoyed this video if you found it interesting as always uh, if you could find uh, a moment to leave the video a like that's always massively appreciated make sure you subscribe to the channel um, I've got a plan for the next video uh, but I need to put some thought into it uh, to make sure I get it right uh, but um, I'm really excited to, for the next video it does involve the OPSEX but it involves another synth as well let's see if you can guess which one it is if um, you want to see any particular types of patches on the OP6 um, tackled on the channel, then um, let me know in the uh, comments. I've kind of stayed away from doing like a basic bass or lead sound or, or whatever, but if you'd like to see something like that, I'd be more than happy to, um, to take something a little less uh, esoteric on. Um, so I do recognise that that's the way I sometimes go. But um, until next time, have fun with your synths. Whatever synths you may have available to you. And I will certainly hold up my side of the bargain and have fun with mine. But until next time, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.